The National Cutting Horse Association presents a series by the Converse Cowboy Behind the Mines featuring Matt Gaines brought to you in part by Performance Horse Central and these fine sponsors. NCHA has always been a very important part of my life. Most importantly because um, at a very young age I lost my mother and it was this community, the NCHA community and the families and the friendships and everything that just kept me level and kept me focused on, on goals and they became my family, literally. I feel very close to so many people in this organization. Mr. Matt Gaines, here we are. We're in October of 2021, and the NCHA Futurity is right around the corner. One of the biggest shows of the year in the cutting horse industry. What is Matt Gaines' mindset right now? My mindset, I try to keep it pretty much the same all the time, and what I've learned over the years is the more simple I can keep my approach every time I work a horse, the more success I have. The way I look at it is the cow's kind of the glue that holds everything together. And if I can just focus on always staying in position, that cow's gonna hold my horse where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. That's really all I focus on working horse. And it's kind of the same thing every day. Try to go to the same spot every day, make sure the cow's pulling me through a turn, and let my horses build confidence, you know, every time they're going to the same spot, this is how it's gonna happen. And over time and repetition, you know, they, they get comfortable there, they get confident in it. And a confident horse is a smart horse. Maybe the only thing different as far as for me getting ready for the futurity is, you know, because these horses have never been shown before, I start paying a little more attention to where when I work one, from the time I cut my first cow, throw my hand down, I want that horse sharp, ready to go from the first move. And from this point on, kind of focus on that too, you know, because okay. when you go show it to Trudy, they don't give you a couple pulls and then start judging. <laughs> so try to start getting them used to, as soon as you put your hand down, it's game on. So you gotta be riding high right now. You're leading the world standings. How does that play a factor in going into the Futurity? I've, I've been showing a lot all year. Uh, We've been hauling. I've been showing two horses in the open, two horses in the novice. Every once in a while, I'll show one, the five. So, I mean, like, I've been to the herd a lot of times this year. And just through that, your confidence level in showing and your awareness to me is so much better. I really feel like showing that much this year has made me a better trainer in that. I think when you're at home just training horses a lot, not showing as much, for me anyway, it's real easy to get to working on stuff that maybe it feels good, but it doesn't really mean anything when you get ready to go show that horse. And so I just, right now, I feel like I'm really in tune to how I need a horse to be when I go drop my hand. What is the most important lesson you've learned from all of the futurities that you've been to? Every time you go down there, if you just focus on doing your job, controlling the things you can control, that gives you the best chance to win. And it, it's funny, like everybody gets nervous, right? Like, I mean, when you compete, I think it's natural to get nervous. Well, the only reason we get nervous is because we're worried about the result. That's what makes you nervous. Like, you don't want to have a bad result. You want a good result. And what I've really tried to learn to do and teach myself is just don't think about the results so much because if you don't do your job, it doesn't matter. Like if you don't do your job, you're not gonna have a good result. So there's no need even worrying or thinking about the result. Focus on doing your job. That's what you have control of. And if you do that and you do it good, then you'll have a good result. What's been different about this year, training these three-year-olds versus years past? It's the first time I've ever had to train my three-year-olds basically on the road. And there's pros and cons to that. My horses have been 
all over the United States, my three-year-olds, and I mean, they've been in pretty much every situation you can put a horse in. As far as that part of it, they're pretty mature for three-year-olds and that they've been hauled, they've been exposed to a lot of different environments. So going somewhere new is not a big deal. The tough part about training three-year-olds on the road is I haven't got to work many cattle. I've worked them a lot on the flag. I've got to work them a little bit on cows, but probably half as much as I normally would. But I really feel like it, at this point anyway, they're as far along now as they usually are. Some of them maybe even a little more solid than they are usually at this time. But I also feel like from now till the maturity, I, I feel like it's gonna be important that I work cattle on them more consistently than I have been. You know, flag's great, but it's one dimensional. Mm -hmm. You know, when you work a cow, it's just different. You know, they're coming at you, they're going away from you. They're just different aspects to working a cow than a flag. So I just, I feel like from now to, till it's time to go show, I need to try to work them more on cows just so they're sharper, they're smarter and more ready to go, I think. What is something you focus on outside of cutting, outside of training horses that helps you really get your, your mindset dialed in? I don't do a whole lot outside of horses, but I do enjoy playing golf. I think golf is very relatable to cutting. I think it's, it's a lot of timing and feel. I think it's very mental. It is funny because I've been on the golf course before playing golf and just get in a mental mindset of slowing myself down and maybe softer about things or whatever it is and and something will click, you know, and I'm like, you know, I need to be more that way about my horses. I mean, and, and that's happened more than one time. Like, it's a fairly common occurrence, you know, where I can be out on the golf course playing golf, not really thinking about working horses, but something will happen while I'm out there that will trigger something in my mind. It's like, you know, maybe you should take this approach a little more in working your horses or showing or whatever. And it, it's always mental stuff, right? Because I mean, it's not like, you know, nothing in my golf swing is going to change about how I want a horse to work, but it's more the mental aspect of it and how to approach different things, different situations pretty easy for me most of the time to stay somewhat soft and comfortable on a horse because I've done it my whole life. Like it's hard for me to do that on the golf course because like well, I'm not, I don't play golf every day. It's not what I, I do. So I'm not really that confident in it. And what do you do when you're not very confident? You tense up. But still, even though when I'm playing golf and I get that way, I mean, sometimes I'll realize, you know, I'm still, maybe I'm a little more tense on the horses and I need to be, or maybe, maybe there's something I'm doing that's making them a little more tense and a little more rigid. It's usually somewhere along those lines that I can really apply this approach to my horses and I think it'll help. So it's a way for me to get my mind on something else that sometimes kind of leads me to something I need to change back on my job. You've been at this cutting game for a long time, since 1983, right? You've ridden some of the best horses around, Smooth as a Cat, Special New Baby, Second Spot, just to name a few. These horses that you're gonna bring to the Futurity this year is the one that stands out in your mind as an exceptional horse. You know, you never know till you go drop your hand and show them, but I, I've got a stud this year that feels like as good a horse as, as I've had in a while and has a lot of the same qualities that the horses you mentioned and some others, some of the better horses that I've had. He's smart, he's mature, very well-minded for a stud. He's athletic, can run, stop hard, tries hard, pretty eager to please. I feel like he has a chance to be a really good horse. Futurity's such a different animal, you never know what's yeah. gonna happen there, but I, I feel real confident that this is a horse that's gonna win a lot throughout his show career. You know, whether he does it at the maturity or not, who knows, but but, he, but I think he is a really good horse. Yeah. At what point were you like, okay, there's something special here? This horse, I didn't ride him a whole lot as a two-year-old myself. I rode him a few times. I watched him some. And when I rode him, I, I liked him. He, as a two-year-old, I was a little bit afraid he, he might be a little heavy and a little too slow. But once I started riding him more, kind of right at the end of his two-year-old year and as a three-year-old and 
got to know him better myself and kind of develop a relationship with him and learn more about him. He's changed a lot. I think even now, still, if you just look at him, he's a beautiful horse, but, it, but if you just look at him, I don't know if a person would think he could do the stuff that he does mm. as easy as he does it. And, you know, early on this year, probably as early as January, February, I felt like this horse had a chance to be, you know, way better than average. So I hate to say any of them are special until they've proven they're special. So my term is better than average and because <laughs> I, <laughs> but I do, I think he's that kind of horse. I think he could be a special individual. I think he has the talent and the mindset and all the qualities that you need to have a special horse. And mm -hmm. the rest of it's gonna be up to him. I mean, is he a show horse or not? Well, I don't know yet, we'll find out. Here's New I Would. Rider Matt Gaines, owner Crystal Creek Ranch. Well, you know, Matt, he was our Super Stakes champion, and Matt's our, one of our top up and coming young friends. Well, he's won over a million dollars. Oh, I tell you, he did in a short period of time, too. <laughs> I was watching a run of yours back from 2001 when you won the Derby on New I Would, and I thought it was funny. I heard the commentators talking about this new up and comer, one of the top up and comers, Matt Gaines. And, the lady commentator said that he's, and she sounded very excited about it, and that he's won over a million dollars, and which is an accomplishment for a lot of people. But if they could have only forecasted the career of Matt Gaines and seen the nine million dollars in lifetime earnings come in the 16 Futurity finalist that you would go on to have the Futurity Championship in 16, how have you stayed so consistent throughout your career? I try to be consistent in what I do with the horses every day, and. And you know, and I've learned a lot. I'm a different trainer now than I was in 2001, you know, because I feel like I'm smarter. Hopefully I'm smarter. I've been through some of the ups, a lot of the downs, and pretty much everything as a competitor in our sport you can go through at this point. So, you know, you learn from that. You know, nobody's ever born great, right? You right. gotta go through stuff and and fail and to me, there's two kinds of people. You know, there's people that, that get hit with adversity and they and they give up, and there's other people that get hit with adversity and that makes them try harder. I've always been one of those people that when I lose, it makes me try harder, it makes me work harder. I don't like to lose. That drive within myself has been part of it, that when things don't go my way, I always try to figure out why and, and try to fix it and become better from it and move on. And I feel like if you do that, good things will eventually come. You mm -hmm. just have to keep working at it. You've got a lot going on, Matt. You've been hauling for the world all year. You're getting these three-year-olds ready. Who else is it behind the scenes that may be helping out to allow you to do what you do? Oh, my wife, Tara, like, I couldn't do what I do without her. I've got one job, she's probably got 20. She does everything. She makes the entry, she books a hotel room, she makes sure the horses are healthy and ready to go, and she's the one that makes everything happen. I just kind of train the horses and try to stay out of the way, basically. <laughs> In my mind, anyway, there's nobody better. I want to be completely focused on what my job is and be sure that, that I do my job the best I can. And I feel like for me to do that, putting everything else out of it the best I can, that's the best for me. And, and Tara really allows me to be able to do that. Mm. So we're going to have a couple other guys on the show, Tatum Rice and James Payne that you're gonna be facing off with at the Futurity. And I'm curious to know your opinion um, as to what those guys bring to the table as competitors. I watched Tatum and the success he's had. And I mean, he, he's just good at what he does. He has the you know, ability to will himself into some wins, you know. Not everybody has that. Like he, you know, he has that confidence in himself and an ability to 
show beyond maybe what he's really got underneath him sometimes. And to me, that makes him special. I think he's one of those guys. So what about James Payne? James Payne's the hardest working horse trainer I know probably. You know every time he shows up, his horses are gonna be ready. He's gonna do the work. He, you know, grind it out every day. Tatum and I, we grew up in this more, you know, James didn't really grow up in it. So I think James has been a really good horse trainer for a really long time. I think it's taken him a little bit to get the, the showmanship about him, you know, to, to be at the level he's at now. We've all been through it, right? It's just, you know, I was in a position and Tatum was in, in a position we went through it at an earlier age than, you know, James did. To me, he's a combination of like Bill Freeman and Kobe Wood. Like he's kind of that, you know, he's gonna go grind it out and he might work a cow for two minutes out of two minutes and 30 seconds, but then his horses have the style and, you know, and he's kind of developed that showmanship presence, you know, like so, and they're gonna go down there, cut a cow, throw their hand down and, and make you go mark them, yeah. you know? And, and James, he has the ability to do that with a little flair about it too, you know? So, I mean, like he's one of those guys, like, you know the cutting's not over till he goes because he knows how to force those judges into marking him. And you, you got to respect that. He's, he's pretty awesome. Like I said, he's really, really good horse trainer. The next time we visit with you, it'll be right before the Futurity. Every top horse is going to be there. Every top trainer is going to be there. And I know you're a competitor. Matt Gaines is one of the best competitors who's ever played the game of cutting. So how bad do you want to win the Futurity this year? As bad as everybody else does. You always want to win, right? Like, if you compete, you want to win. Because for a long time, it's like, you know, the Futurity was the only major event I hadn't won, right? Like, I hadn't won everything else and some of them twice and, you know, but I hadn't won the Futurity. So that was kind of always the, you know, kind of monkey on my back kind of deal. And so for me, it's nice to not have that still hanging over my head. But at the same time, I still want to win it as much as, as I ever have. But I don't feel like it's something that I have to do anymore to, to make my career complete, if that makes sense. I think I have a horse this year that might give me a shot at it, we'll see. But I try not to think about it in those terms as winning the futurity as much as go do my job, focus on my job, make sure my horse is prepared and the results take care of themselves. And hopefully if I do that, maybe when it's over, I will be, so we'll see. Well, Matt, thank you for your time. And we will see you in Fort Worth, my friend. Sounds good, thank you.